Violin World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 558 A Relaxing Party Following her nose, Valet trotted down a corridor after her maybe friend, relaxing a little at the lack of danger and wondering if this friendly after-party was actually just a friendly after-party. The chaise-wearing stallion turned through one side door and another, stepping into a loud, brightly lit room with an unreasonably large couch and a screen showing the arena on the far wall. Yo! He stomped a hoof twice, heralding his arrival. Captain Cannonball in the house, and looky who I brought. Everyone in the room perked up. A pair of bandana wearing griffinesses on the couch, who might have been twins, climbed over each other to look, and then a beast unicorn with an eye patch lifted his face from the refreshment table with a quick belch. In one corner, a pegasus with a mask over his muzzle opened a single eye, hanging by his tail from the ceiling, and a sheep valet didn't have time to identify ducked behind the couch and out of sight. Ah, hey. Valet folded her ears, the attention in the room giving her second thoughts. Mad famous, huh? One of the griffins, the one with the bandana around her neck, whistled cheerfully. Girl, you rock your fights. Cap, how'd you get a big leaguer in here to hang with us? Cannonball rubbed the back of his neck with a hoof, turning the slightest shade of pink. Ah, uh, you know, my usual wiles. Ah, uh, Valet blinked. The other griffin adjusted her bandana around her head and flipped off the couch in an appreciable show of dexterity. Whew, you're the one the commentators are always freaking out over. One of the ones, at least. Quite the bear they got this year, huh? Name's Tasha. Pleased to meet ya. The stallion in the corner gave her one more look. Todd, and likewise. Then he went back to drinking. Cool, cool. Uh, Valet stayed in the doorway. So you're just, like, uh, hanging out? Ah, you're making a nervous cap. The neck bandana griffin giggled, hopping off the couch as well and shoulder-shoving cannonball away before extending a talon. Carla, and yep, we're just some lower-class fighters who thought we'd celebrate making the first cut. Not sure how far we're gonna go, so we might as well enjoy it while we can, right? The pegasus in the corner grunted, voice deep and raspy. In the past, three quarters of challengers in the second round are defeated within two rounds. Being here now proves you're not weak. Tasha flicked a feather at him. That's Mundungus, but don't call him by it, or he'll get mad. He prefers a stage name. I don't know why I even hang with you, Mundungus grunted, turning on his tail so that his back was to everyone. Valet blinked. She almost spoke up when Cannonball cut her off. So, yeah, it's not much, but we've got a nice little crew going here, don't we? All these homies with their hearts on their sleeves. Not so hard to see what they're like. Ain't that right, Dung? Put a sock in it. Huh. Valet nodded along, not entirely sold on the friendliness of certain members. The Griffins certainly seemed nice, at least. Well, I'm not exactly trying to draw attention to myself, but if you want me to stay, hmm, she sniffed. Seems like there's good snacks, at least. And I could do with hanging out a little. Sure, why not? She shrugged, once again determining there was no danger in the room and uh, satisfying herself with that. Having to be on edge all the time was a pain. Not trying to draw attention to yourself? Carla looked politely flabbergasted. Girl, what? Aren't you that celebrity from the other month with Iron Ridge? Those commentators are going wild over it, and I remember your face in the papers. She pointed at Talon. We got that news as far away as Wilderwin. Hmm, maybe. Valet folded her ears, noting as she entered that there was a hefty weapons rack by the door. You know those bozos are from Iron Ridge too, though, right? Or at least were there when all that stuff went down. Todd blinked, his attention finally captured from the drink table in the corner. You know them? Valet shrugged. What, how in your Nova? I might have beat them up a time or two. They were, um, uh, uh, she blinked, wondering just how much to say. Might be more accurate to say they know me. She kept walking, moving to see who had ducked behind the couch. Tasha quickly caught on, leaning over and grabbing her talon. Hey, hose girl, don't be shy. Check it, you got a new friend. She pulled up and Valet blinked hard, suddenly finding herself face to face with a very nervous Senese. Bah? Senese smiled uncertainly, trying to look small. Wait, you're here? 
The lady blinked harder, tilting her head. Hold on, you're not... In a flash, Senesee was free from the talon around her neck and had darted to Valet's side, holding a wing over her back and leaning against the couch. Oh, Valet and I go way back, she laughed, pausing between breaths to whisper in her ear, Don't tell anyone I know my spell arts. Valet didn't break stride, not wanting to throw her acquaintance under the cart and knowing exactly what a monk in that position could do to her, even if she did. Yeah, one of the first friendly faces I met in the Empire, actually. She tried to slip away a little so they could make eye contact. Seriously, though, you're here? That's, uh, that's really cool. The unspoken promise that they talk later passed between them, and they turned back to the rest of the room. <laughs> Senesi managed, still looking flustered. I guess I know another person here as well. Cannonball nodded sagely. We're not the tightest knit bunch, but there are ways. It's why Dung is here. He may act grumpy, but he knows half the people in this room. Mundungus harumphed, and Tasha shot him a grin. Valet blinked at everyone. Well, do you want to eat, watch, chat, or just hang? Carla gave the Pegasus a very quick glance as well. We're just trying to have a good time here. Well, just hanging is good. Valet slipped closer to the refreshment table, detecting some kind of cheesy bean dip and a big bowl of punch that somehow wasn't alcoholic. And getting some of this, and making use of that huge couch. Don't mind me, though. Just carry on and stuff. The most socially oriented in the room took the hint and didn't press her, and those who weren't suave enough to notice fortunately had other things to think about. Valet settled into the couch with Senesse by her side, aware the mayor was watching her. They would have to talk. End of chapter 558